Hello, hello. My name is Charlotte Mallet. So I've made an exclusive card for you today featuring handsomely suited stamp set. It is from the Well Suited Bundle. This is on page 66 of your catalog. If you have a Stampin' Up! mini catalog. Now this bundle includes stamps and dies. The dies make a pretty straightforward suit card, or you can create cards that um, just show a dress shirt. The stamp set to create a little bit of a different card for you today and show you how you might use this in a different way. We are going to pull in some colors that aren't in this bundle. We're going to pull in Pool Party Stampin' Blend, and then we're going to pull in a little bit of Smoky Slate ink, um, even though the gray in this is the basic gray. It's a little dark for what I want to do. Now, let me move some of this stuff out of the way. These are the papers. Awesome, beautiful papers. We are going to use the grid paper from this stack, as well as a small piece of this red check with the flowers. So I'm gonna show you this card by deconstructing it. We're gonna stamp a greeting in Craft Ink on Knight of Navy cardstock. This measures three by a quarter inch. And just from a measurement perspective, because I'm in the United States, I am using the Imperial measurement system, so everything will be in inches. We're going to use this piece, this grid piece of pattern paper. This measures four by five and a quarter, just slightly inset from the card base, which will be four and a quarter by five and a half once folded. And that card base will be in Knight of Navy. You're gonna to wanna to stamp three ties. We'll show you that here. But what we're going to do, what's unique about this card is the drop shadows that we're going to create. Oh, one last thing in terms of measurements. Three inches by a half inch for this red paper. And before you cut that, um, I want to show you something when we get to it, but make sure if you do cut it, make sure that the flowers are in the center. So what we're doing here is we are going to create a drop shadow for our ties. Um, it's kind of a fun way to use your dies in a little bit of a, a different way to create a stencil, if you will, um, of that shape so that we can add a little visual dimension without adding a whole lot of actual dimension. And in order to do this, you are going to need sponge dauber and your ink. And we're going to create a stencil. So let's do that really quick. You're going to want to have a piece of cardstock that is essentially five inches tall by two inches wide. And you're going to die cut the tie out of the center of it. If you need to draw a line in the center of this so that you can get your tie centered, I would suggest you do that. You will probably, you will likely use this line again when we line up to, to daub our drop shadow. So let's get started. We'll move this out of the way. The reason I like this being five inches long because it lines up with our paper that we've cut. Our paper is five and a quarter. It gives us a little shimmy room on the bottom, but you can use the top of this, this um, stencil shape that you've created as your guide to center along your cardstock, if that makes sense. So we're going to measure, I'm not saying this correctly, we're going to line up the top of our stencil with the top of the designer series paper, and we're going to center it from left to right. You can eyeball that or you can pull out your ruler and actually measure it. Now, I'm not going to physically tape this down because I don't want to um, risk tearing my designer paper, but, and it's okay if it, if it shimmies just a little bit, I'm gonna use my fingers to hold it down tight, top and bottom, okay? And 
in my prototype card, I like to do that. I like to make a prototype before I assemble a card. In a prototype, I don't like how dark this gray is. I think that shadow is really, really dark. So I'm going to use a lighter gray. This was created using basic gray. I'm going to use going gray. Is this going gray? No, smoky slate. Going gray is an old color. And we are going to just sponge daub that ink in. And I can already tell that this is going to be a better color. That's laid down. So I'm holding that in place. I'm trying to make the ink on one side of that shadow. That's really the only side that's gonna show is this left side, this side over here. And so that's where I'm putting most of my attention. But just for kicks, I'll fill in the whole thing. Okay. Oh, that looks very good. And let's just compare the difference between the basic gray and the smoky slate. Nice difference. This is a lot better. Then when we stamp and layer tie over it, we're gonna have a really good light drop shadow. Let's get two more of these. We're gonna go on either side. So in terms of measurements, I like to just eyeball, but you guys are gonna say, that's crazy, don't just eyeball. By making this two inches across, if you line it up with the center of your first tie, right here, and again, along the top of that pattern paper, you should have equal distance. When we flip it to the other side, we'll be able to do the same because we put the tie in the center of our stencil. So let's fill this one in again. I hope I'm not wiggling the camera. I will try and go not so aggressively so that I'm not shaking my table. Sponge daubing is a serious business here. I have converted 99% of my ink pads over to the new body style. And you can tell the colors I use the least have not yet been converted, which is the old smoky slate. So good news here is I'm pulling it out and using it. So I'll probably ultimately switch it over. See that space there? Pretty awesome. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Line up this side with the middle of that tie. The top with the top of this pattern paper. The grid paper really makes it easy for lining these things up. Oops, I shifted just a little bit. And now we will fill that in. Make sure. Very good. Ha! You guys are saying, get some tape, put some tape down. Not gonna do it. I'm just making a card after all. Just picking up the ink from the sponge dauber directly from the pad. When I made the other card or the other prototype, I actually filled in um, the top of my pad with some reinker. Um, let me see if I've got some in this one and picked that up. There's a little bit there. Some old ink, let's see, that I was able to pick up. And because it's still on there, you can pick that up and it might give you some more. Clean the top of your case as well. Oh yeah, you can see that coming on pretty good. Get one more to do the top. And there we go three ties coming straight across. Fantastic. Now let's stamp our ties and color them. What I've done differently on this is typically I stamp, when I'm using blends, I stamp in memento ink. But in this particular case, I wanted these ties to be blue on blue. So I'm going to stamp these ties in Night of Navy. And I'm gonna use just a scrap piece of white. I'm going to stamp two of one pattern and one of another. So let's do two of the star pattern here and then we'll clean the stamp 
and stamp one with the stripe pattern. Now I'm not leaving a lot of room to use the dies on these, even though I have the dies. I'm gonna hand cut these scissors or these um, hand cut these ties with scissors. Maybe I will die cut them. It looks like there's enough room. Let's see. No, I remember now. I don't wanna die cut them because that die cut shape ends up being this. And if I die cut them, I will completely cover my shadow. So what I'm going to do is hand cut them just a little bit closer around the tie so that the shadow can be seen from the side. So let's clean this stamp here. And we will pop on the other tie. I um, need to clean my blocks. I got a, a tons of hand sanitizer that should work really well to help clean these blocks. All right, and then let's ink up this tie. Make sure it gets good and inked. And stamp this here. Excellent. All right, I'll we'll close this up. And we'll give this a good drying time and we'll pull out our Stampin' Blend, which is the pool party. It looks like I put it away, but in the wrong spot. Do you do that? Oh, there it is. Hiding, hiding, hiding on my desk. So we're using the dark pool party. Now, before I color with this, I kind of want to show you the difference. How this tie looks stamped in black with the blue and blue with the blue. This is actually Pacific Point. Here it is with the Knight and Navy. Just subtle, but I like the look of this blue on blue. It makes the tie feel a little more like it would in real life. If we were to use red, this is a real red. If we were to use so saffron, so you kind of get the gist. I like pulling in a different color than what's in the suite or what's in the bundle because I think it allow it just changes the whole look of a card. So your card looks a little bit different than anyone else's card. And then we're gonna quickly just color these in and we don't need to add any shading. We're gonna color these pretty flat. Um, I am just going to just paint the color in. I'm not gonna go over it a lot because I don't wanna make this ink super muddy. It actually doesn't get that muddy it's dried and even though this is a water-based ink versus an alcohol-based ink these two if you don't spend too much time on the water-based one seem to play okay together so see how I've just kind of whoopsie started to get a little slightly paint that in let's paint this side flip it around so I can paint this a little bit easier just along the edge we're just adding color doesn't have to be perfect just needs to be colored there we go there let's see if I can because we're trimming this out you can go outside of the lines that's fine I don't know if you can hear my little one in the background yelling. He's playing games with friends online. He is 10. He just got home from school. All right, let's add another right there. Let's really make that guy look less banded. I guess I did add more ink to that than I was anticipating, but that's okay. All right, and then we're just gonna cut these out. So let's do that. I'm just using long scissors. You can use your paper snips, whatever works. I have a favorite pair of scissors that I use. These are actually craft or the sewing scissors 
that I can get the blades sharpened with. I just love how soft or how they cut through paper like butter and I just like these long blades. So that's what I'm going to do. But you, you do whatever scissors you got. I'm sure you all have a favorite pair. I've had these for probably 10 years and have sharpened them a couple times. When I like hand cutting too, it's relaxing. When you hand cut, I like to hand cut closest to the uh, to the interior of the blade there. It gives me a little more control as I go around and then I can uh, take longer cuts as well. And just for kicks, why don't we cut one of these out with the die so that you can see what I'm talking about regarding an edge. Let's use this little mini. Do you guys have a mini cutter yet? I'm telling you, it's it's just cool because it's cute and little, but it's also really easy to pull into your space when you want to cut something out. I'm going to use the tie-dye. Ooh, the tie-dye, very funny. And we're going to lay that up. Here I am going to use a little I have so much washi tape, and we're going to use a little washi tape just to line this up and see if what we think, um, how, that, how the halo around that image looks. Let me move this first, line it up, and then we'll cut it. All right. Are you lined up? See, I would have had this cut out by the scissors already. <laughs> <laughs> Just teasing. Okay. We'll make our sandwich here. Little itty bitty cutter. Something so satisfying about this just tiny machine. Pop that through. And let's see. What do you think? Do you have a preference? Could go either way, right? When we lay it over the top, though, it tends to hide the shadow more than I want. Okay, well, we'll just trim that a little closer. Get to go along with me in my thinking and my reasoning. All right, let's cut the rest of the sky out here. Okay. And I'm gonna trim this one just a little closer so that they all three match. Whichever direction you go, if you use your, your dies, cut all three the same way, just so that they look the same on your card. Trim a little more off there. Get a little bit off this side. There we go. It's actually a pretty easy image to trim out because of all those straight edges. You don't have a lot of crazy curves and all of that. Now that I have all these ties here, is your brain just going crazy on all the cool things you could do? <laughs> but we're just going to use three. Okay, so we'll use these three here. And we're going to mount them on here like so. But I think it might be fun to incorporate some of this twine somehow, perhaps before we mount them. So. Let's see, navy or gray. Ooh, maybe the gray. Let's use the gray. We're going to cut some off there. Get those out of the way. And before we assemble this, we're going to wrap this. I think it might look nice wrapped around the center. In fact, let's just commit to that. Wrap it around the center and to make it easy. No one's going to see the back side. Let's tape a little bit of that there and make it easy to wrap. 
one. Maybe we'll give a little bit of a space in between. Two. Grid makes it so easy to line that stuff up. I'll tape that again on the back side. And we'll trim this off. All right. Excellent. Now we can pop up and build our card from there. Uh -huh, looking good. Now did I get one of the wrong ties? That looks like a different color, doesn't it? Hmm, but it is the same. It's just messing with my eyes. Okay, so let's pop these ties up using a Stampin' Dimensional. One on either side. I might need to trim this in top and half for these top ones. One. Two. I'm going to get my gunky scissors for... I have gunky scissors that I use to trim my dimensionals in half for the skinnier sections. Not my good scissors. Okay, these are ready to go on the card. Let's pull the dimensionals off. Now, the fun part, you get your shadow to appear. So I wanna hide the top part, and I really want the shadow to just appear on the left side of this. So I'm gonna to come to the side and mount that there. So you have a cast shadow, it kind of wigs with your eyes, but it's the cast shadow is actually, in my actual light, the real shadow's over here, but the cast shadow is going to be this direction. And we'll add this center one. Just like so. And then the last one. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty cool already. Now, you can stamp the you are the best on a little piece of Knight of Navy cardstock. You could also stamp it and then heat set it with white emboss for a little more contrast. You decide, I think for this one, we will ink up oh, let's just ink up a little bit on with craft just for kicks. So let's get that all inked to make sure that we've got our ink good. Huh. If you wanted to heat set that, craft ink is a good wet sticky ink. You could use that instead of your Versamark. Um, with some embossing powder. In fact, why don't we do that? We'll emboss. I'm gonna pull my powder out of my little container here. Just add a little. I forgot my embossing buddy because I wasn't planning to emboss. Let's see how messy it really is. And now I've got a dog barking to let me in. Don't they realize that we're making videos around here? I have two golden retrievers. One that is six years old and a pandemic puppy who is seven months old. And that's the one that's barking to come in. She's got no manners. 
Okay, so I'm using just a paintbrush since I didn't have um, the embossing buddy handy beforehand and it just took enough off and now let's heat set. sure does give much more contrast but I did get some goobers oh well it's not it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be heartfelt and then we're gonna hand cut this guy because that's how I roll I like to just build on the fly but if you want dimensions I said this was roughly a quarter inch tall by three inches long now Remember I said if you trim this one out, which is a half inch by three inches, you are going to want to put the flowers in the middle. That is so we can hide those flowers because look how awesome that paper looks as a top to bottom to center that greeting. And we're going to put a little adhesive on this, center it, and if I have, because I hand cut this one, oops, he's stuck to the table. There we go. Because I hand cut this one, if it doesn't line up, on the other end, I'm just gonna trim it and make it match, which it doesn't. It looks like it's about a quarter inch short, but that looks nice. So we'll trim that just like so. Move all the scrap away and see how that looks right about there. I like it and I think I'm gonna pop it up even more then these, uh, this twine can kind of serve as an extension of the greeting a little bit. Okay, so before we do that, let's mount this to our card base. Again, I'm using Night and Navy. I'm going to add just a little stamp and steel on all four corners. Maybe just a dot here and here and here. And we're going to line that up centered all the way around. And tack those down just like so. Beautiful. All right. And because this is going to be mounted on the ties, I want to just make sure that I put a dimensional on either end. I'm going to use the smaller versions this time. And I'm obviously milking and need to reorder dimensionals. Okay, let's pop that on there. And now you have a very nice You're the Best card with fantastic shadows. Let's see if we can move this to be now they look real because the light is shadowed but they're really there for reals for reals all right you guys i hope you enjoyed this card and that little fun tip and technique on adding drop shadows and i can't wait to stamp with you again next month again my name is charlotte mallet and i appreciate you spending a minute with me have a great day